40 Tweety Bird Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I have a cute little 40 Tweety Bird inside of his cage. So the 40 element is that he's actually just attached inside the cage with a little um, loop in there so he can swing back and forth. It's really cute. I hope you guys like this as much as I do. Tomorrow I will have a Sylvester nail that goes with it. So check back for that and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin with an overlay of a really pretty lilac acrylic. So this acrylic isn't very opaque, which, I mean, it's it's opaque enough. It's kind of, kind of a jelly consistency to it. So it leaves just a really pretty, especially on an overlay over a natural nail, just a very pretty, pretty base. It's actually one of my favorites. Then I'm going to encase it with a layer of clear acrylic over the top of the whole thing. Make sure it is nice and strong. And the reason I always like to go over this, just in case anybody is curious, the reason I chose a purple background for these two is that the yellow of Tweety and yellow and purple are opposite colors. And if you use an opposite color in the background, it's going to make the whole thing really show up really well. And it's going to make both colors look brighter. So for Tweety, since he's smaller and he's kind of in the cage, I wanted to make sure that he was definitely visible and eye-catching. So with a purple background, Tweety is going to show up really good. So then I'm going to uh, just file the nail into shape with my e-file, coarse bit first, finer bit second, make sure it's nice and smooth. And then on a nail form backing, I'm going to sculpt Tweety on his little perch. So I'm going to start with a brown acrylic and I'm going to make the perch. So just make basically a small skinny little rectangle. Pretty easy on there. So it doesn't have to be anything too, too fancy. And then with a nice bright yellow acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting my Tweety bird. So he's got the nice big birdie head and then a much smaller body. Just fit that on there like that. He's also got feet that are, he's kind of sitting with his bottom on the perch and his feet sticking out the front, which if you guys, it's nothing like the way birds are. So just kind of, I love how cartoons just take creative liberty like that. It just cracks, cracks me up sometimes. Um, so he got the little body there at his little arms, well, wings wings going out to the sides. Like I said a couple seconds ago, this is really, really small. So you want to try to do as much detail as you can, bearing in mind that some things just might get missed because it is a very, very small little surface that you're working on here. So after I've got that, I've got his little feet that are going to be sitting right in front like so. And just sculpt those with orange. There's the first one, just like his head, his feet are a little bit on the large side. So I did one and then I'm just gonna kind of let that sit for a second. Add a little bit more acrylic over his head, make it a little bit more 3D so it sticks up a bit farther from his body and his arms. Pat that out. And then I'm going to take and add his second foot. So the reason I left the first foot for a minute before adding the second one is I wanted that first foot to set a little bit because if you were to add the second foot right away, right after you added the first one, they're gonna blend together and create a morphed one piece blob on the end. So if you just let that first one set, it doesn't have to set completely, but just a little bit, it'll give you a much better result. So now I'm going to take and I cut off a really fine piece of wire and I made a little loop of it by wrapping it around a dotting tool. And then I'm going to, I strung that over a little piece of wire that's got a loop on the end. It's got an eye on the end. And then I'm going to glue my Tweety Bird to that little loop-de-loop -loop that I made on the dotting tool. So he's got the little uh, handle of the perch going up and around. And I'm going to cut off the extra wire from the hanger part of it and attach that to my little nail in just a minute. So I'm going to make the top of the birdcage with a kind of a bronze goldish color acrylic. So I ended up painting over the entire cage with a metallic kind of a bronze gold color. And so I wanted the background acrylic pieces that are sculpted to be as close to that color as possible. So this is the one that I chose for that. So I have the top of the birdcage. I'm going to be adding the bottom of the birdcage right at the tip of the nail. Glue down Tweety's little perch right in the middle. So just take that little piece and plop it down right in the glue. So you want to kind of eyeball and measure how big or how long you want that little hanger part to be so that Tweety sits as close to the middle of the cage as possible. And so then go ahead and secure that piece down with some more bronze acrylic. Now I'm going to take and paint all the, de all the details on Tweety. So I'm gonna start just with black base shapes for his eyes, just like so go through and you know do outlines as much as you can again he's very small do some outlines with brown instead of black it'll make him look a little bit more a little more subtle a little bit a little bit less intrusive to the whole image add some highlights with a brighter shade of yellow on him just like so it's 
it's really hard to do. It's a little awkward to paint them because he does swing on the nail. He's not stationary. If it would have been easier for you to paint the details on him prior to attaching some of this stuff together, you definitely could. I kind of wanted to see how the whole thing was going to look on the nail before I got too far with this, so I decided to do it at this point. And you don't really want to wait any longer into the design process to do it because once the bars are in front of him, it'd be much more difficult to paint all of his details. So do what you can, add his eyelashes, fill in his eyes with white, add the little black pupils like so, apply a layer of matte top coat, and then after that has dried, you can go ahead and glue four pieces of wire to the top part of the cage. And I'm using a very fine, very easy to bend wire, and the reason I'm using that is because I wanted it to be easy to bend and manipulate, and so it is a little flexible at the end of the design, but they, the curve on them is pretty secure and especially after they have the metallic gel painted on top of them it's not too bad so just try to use a very fine thin wire so glue those four pieces down right space them fairly equally across the front of the cage and then after you have all of those glued in place add another layer of bronze acrylic over the top of them if you just try to glue them in place they are going to pop off it's just the nature of nail glue especially once you try once you try to start bending them it's just going to kind of fall apart on you so make sure that you add acrylic and then after you place that acrylic down you let it set you set this nail to the side you work on something else you check facebook whatever it is that you're going to do and just leave it for a minute so that that acrylic can definitely fully set because even if it's 90 percent set as soon as you start trying to bend the wire it's going to pop open so then take and bend your little wire pieces into really nice curves and then cut off the extra and i would definitely recommend being a little bit a little bit liberal on the amount of wire that you use so that you have enough space that you don't really have to worry about oh no i'm going to run out of wire it's not going to be long enough it's not going to touch so after you have that curve done for the first one glue it down in place then go through and add the curve for the second one so i actually just did this with my fingers and just kind of like pulled it almost so if you guys know how to use curling ribbon with a scissors imagine that your hands are the scissors and you just kind of pull the wire just like you do curling ribbon i hope that makes sense because it makes perfect sense in my brain but you never know sometimes these things are these things just make sense to me and nobody else so there's the second one just go through and do this for all four of them give them that nice so very soft curve and then glue them down sometimes the nail glue is persnickety and doesn't want to do its job but if you give it a moment it should work pretty well and then secure them on the bottom with more of your wonderful bronze acrylic this is going to hold them in place plus it covers up those little wire ends then i'm going to take some bronze gel and i'm going to be painting that over the wires and over the top and bottom of the cage trying very very hard not to get any of this onto Tweety Bird. This makes the whole cage the same color and just kind of finishes it all off. After that's cured go ahead and apply some gel sealer over the top and Tweety is done. I will be uploading Sylvester tomorrow so definitely come back for that one. When he is uploaded I will include a link in the description box below. So if you're watching this later, check back for that. And this is a video of Melody and her daddy dancing. And I certainly would have included the sound for it, but it has a copyrighted, uh, there's copyrighted music in the background. I didn't want any YouTube officials to get their panties in a twist about it. So I just decided to get rid of the sounds. And so that was just her dancing the first time. This is her daddy and this time she's dancing. That's my dad's leg. And she's just the moment she'll get going on it she just there she goes yep <laughs> every time she hears music she just can't help herself she has to boogie <laughs> oh man she cracks me up so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys like this design and please take me in any recreations i'd love to see them and i will see you in my next video bye